C4 stands for Cryptocurrency Certification Consortium. My name is Jessica Levesque and I am C4's Executive Director. And I wanna start by telling you a little bit about my journey into cryptocurrency and I promise it'll become relevant a little bit later. So I'm a former college professor, program director and associate dean. And in 2017, I left the world of academia and the college environment and took a deep dive into cryptocurrencies and open blockchains. And what I found, I was fascinated with. I became a certified Bitcoin professional in 2019 and C4's executive director. And most recently I became a certified Ethereum professional as well. So today we're gonna to talk about who C4 is, what certification C4 offers, who a certified Bitcoin professional is, what the CVP exam looks like, and what is FUD? So CBPs and CEPs and people that have certifications from C4 are considered trusted professionals in trustless technology. And so let's, let's talk about what trustless technology means. It doesn't mean that it can't be trusted. What it means at the, is that there is no central, no central point of authority. So if you look at the um, object on the left side of your screen, you'll notice that there is a center circle, which the other circles all connect to. And this is a way to represent what centralization looks like. If you need, to, if one circle needs to get gain access to the other circle, they have to go through that central point. Now, the other image you can see, there's a lot of different circles and they all connect to each other in different ways, but there is no central point. And this is what we mean by trustless technology. You don't need to trust in a third party because technology allows us to trust each other through computer algorithms. So let's talk about the certifications that C4 offers. We have the CBP, which is a certified Bitcoin professional, the CEP, which is a certified Ethereum professional, and the Cryptocurrency Security Standard Auditor, which is a certification to audit different companies and look into security practices. But today we're gonna to be talking about the CBP. So let's get into a little bit about what the CBP looks like. So the reason that CBPs came to be, the reason that C4 started this certification is because prior to C4's CBP certification, there was no way for industry professionals to be able to test to see if people applying for jobs or claiming that they know about Bitcoin are able to, were able to prove that they were in fact knowledgeable about it. And so C4 created this exam so that there was a way to actually show whether or not someone really did understand Bitcoin and open blockchains. And there are different types of CBPs all over the world. And a few different career options for people who are CBPs are accountants, lawyers, financial planners, um, podcasters, any type of professional that needs to know about Bitcoin and needs to prove that they understand Bitcoin is a perfect fit for becoming a CBP. I know that I would not have an accountant do my taxes if they didn't understand how Bitcoin worked and were a certified Bitcoin professional to prove to me that they did in fact know what Bitcoin does, how the Bitcoin network, network works, and um, what transactions look like. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about what CBPs know. CBP, CBPs understand Bitcoin. They understand Bitcoin transactions. They know how the network operates and they're able to they're able to talk about key events in Bitcoin history and know how to make a Bitcoin transaction like we talked about before. So when we talk about what a CBP is, we can compare it to a driver's license. And the, the reason we can compare a CBP to somebody who is able to drive is because when you are a CBP, you understand the basics of Bitcoin, how to use it, similar to how if you have a driver's license, you need to know how to put the car into drive and into park and how to add windshield wiper fluid, but you don't need to necessarily know how to change out the carburetor or how to fix the brakes. You might know when the brakes are squeaky 
squeaking and needs some attention, but you don't need to know how to actually fix your brakes or how to change a flat tire in order to be a licensed driver. And it's similar with the CBP. You don't need to be a minor. You don't need to be able to run these different algorithms, but you do need to understand how it works and how to make a transaction using Bitcoin. So let's talk about what is on the exam. There are seven main content areas and underneath each of these content areas, there's a lot more information, but I'm just gonna go through an overview for you. So there's the history of money, the digital economy, cryptography basics, Bitcoin basics, clients, wallets, and key management, mining, and Bitcoin commerce. So history of money is understanding how we came to where we're at now with money. So, you know, in the old ages, people would just use barter. I'll give you a cow for a pig, things like that. Then types of money came into play. Like for example, if you wanted to exchange shells for something for a cow or a pig, that was one way that people were able to use shells as money, which obviously it would only be a good source of money if you didn't live by the ocean and had a plethora of shells. Um, and then it moved into, you know, actual gold and then paper notes. And now here we are with credit cards and um, cryptocurrencies and all different types of digital money as well. So you need to know about the digital economy and what, what it looks like to have our financial services online the way that we do now. Um, you also need to know cryptography basics. So this is not something that you need to be able to do your own hashing algorithms, but you need to know what SHA-256 is. It's okay if you don't know that right now, but that's one of those things that as you start to learn more about Bitcoin, you'll start to understand what that looks like. And perhaps you don't know what that is yet. Maybe you don't know what encryption is yet, but you, you will need to learn that to become a CBP. And it's um, part of the fun journey along the way to learn more about Bitcoin. So you also need to know basics of Bitcoin. So what's a blockchain? How are blocks chained together? What is a time lock? What's hashing? What's a digital signature? All things like that. And you also need to know about clients, wallets, and key management. So full clients versus light clients. You need to know about hot wallets, cold wallets, and how to manage your keys. And this is really important if you are somebody that is working in the space and are asked to hold on to somebody else's keys, which means their passwords. And that is something that you should never do. And you'll learn more about that. And that's very important if you are a certified Bitcoin professional to know. So there's also a sections on mining and we talk uh, about the difference between mining pools and solo mining. It's important to understand the proof of work algorithm and what miners bring to Bitcoin and how new Bitcoins are minted through mining. Um, and then also Bitcoin commerce. So supply and demand is related to this and how to sell goods and services in Bitcoin. And so I want you to take a minute and think about the last time you bought something. So was it off Amazon? Was it off eBay? Whatever it is, the last time that you purchased something, the way that you purchased that was through likely, unless it was through Bitcoin, another type of crypto, the way that you purchased it was with a central authority. So if you think about this, the process of buying something, let's say you bought it off Amazon, you go through Amazon, Amazon connects to your bank account, your bank either approves it or they don't approve it. And then Amazon, once they see that, sends you your purchase. So it's a little bit different with Bitcoin because there isn't that central authority that's saying like, hey, you've got this money in here. Instead, it's all done through blockchain technology, digital signatures, um, cryptography. It's really fascinating once you start to get into it. And um, I do think that as we continue to learn more about this technology and have it become more commonplace, that places will begin to accept Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies more and more. So in order to be a CBP, you need to understand how this works. And if you're an entrepreneur, how do you sell goods and services using Bitcoin? So I've talked about what the exam is like, and if you don't know a lot of these terms, it might seem difficult right now. And that's why I talked at the beginning about how I'm a former college professor. So I was an English professor 
I had no degree, still have no degree in computer science. And when I first started to learn about Bitcoin, I was kind of like, whoa, there's a lot of new info about this and I don't have the background knowledge for it. So started to dive in, kind of wanted to throw up my papers because it's so difficult to know where to start and what terms to learn. And it can feel overwhelming, but I think the important thing to remember is that's the same thing with any new information. And then you start to kind of get it, starts to come along. And then that light bulb moment, oh, I think I get this. And then as you progress and continue to understand more and more, eventually you'll have the knowledge you need to become a CBP. So let's talk about what that exam looks like. So the CBP exam is 20 minutes. And the reason it's such a short time period, and there's 75 questions, so trust me, it is a short time period. But the reason that the exam is only 20 minutes is because there's no way for us to proctor all of these exams. So you're taking it at home or perhaps in a classroom. And when you're taking it, you are going to not have an opportunity to look at your notes or to look at, you know, to look things up because that time is progressing. Either you know it or you don't. So there's 75 questions in 20 minutes and you're going to be going through multiple choice, true and false. And the neat thing is either you know it or you don't. And if you know it, you'll be, it'll be pretty obvious as you're going through the exam, as you're, you know, that timer is ticking down that you're able to, you know, get through these questions and feel like you understand it. And then hopefully if you have a 70% or more you've passed and you are an official CVP, you'll get a certification in the mail and there'll be a lookup number for your certification so that you can prove to people digitally that you are a CVP. So what is FUD? I brought that up at the beginning and it's important because FUD stands for fear, uncertainty, and doubt. And the reason this is important is you've probably heard the phrase, Bitcoin is dead constantly in the media for years and years and years, you'll come across politicians, you know, government officials, people at, that work at traditional banking systems saying that Bitcoin's dead, crypto's dead. And the reason we brought up this term FUD is that people who are already benefiting from the current system don't really have an incentive to want Bitcoin to become a currency that is widely used, widely accepted, and the norm. And the reason they don't have this incentive is it takes away their power. And so you'll often hear in the media that Bitcoin is dead. And so if you listen for it, you'll hear it often, and then suddenly it's back, it's dead again, it's back, it's dead again. But if you really understand the technology, it hasn't died, it isn't going to die, it's not dead. And that is why Andreas M. Antonopoulos has called Bitcoin the zombie of cryptocurrencies. And Andreas is one of C4's board members. And this is a really interesting way to look at Bitcoin. And I think it's important because when you understand um, the information, when you understand Bitcoin, you really grasp what it's doing and how revolutionary it is and the way it's changing the world. I think you too, if you're not there yet, you'll come to the understanding that, you know, Bitcoin is something that is changing the way that we live and it's going to continue to change the way that we can function. And that's because Bitcoin is open, it's public, it's borderless, and it has all of these amazing pieces to it that really do change how we can give, receive, and share currency. And so that is the basics of what a CBP is. I want to wish you the best of luck on your exam and just remind you that keep at it, keep studying, and you too can be a CBP. And um, good luck.